In Live 8, Ableton changed the way you access custom parameters from devices that are holding VST instruments. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to add custom parameters to a device and then map those parameters to controllers. And in this case, I'm going to show how this works with the Akai APC40 as well as the Novation Remote SL. Before I talk about Live 8, I want to show you how this all worked in Live 7 so you can see why the new method is so much better. I have a set and in this set I've loaded the VST Massive by Native Instruments. I'll pop it up so you can see it. And as you can see this is a very complex synthesizer. It has a lot of parameters. In previous versions of Live, clicking this would unfold all the device parameters that the VST was serving up to Live in the order chosen by the VST manufacturer. Live would map the first 128 parameters but it couldn't see beyond the first 128. And there was no way to organize these, so if you wanted to put oscillator pitch 1 first, you couldn't do it. You couldn't just drag that parameter over and assign it to knob 1. So that meant you had to hunt through these different parameters using MIDI mapping mode and try to find the one you wanted, and then use MIDI learn to attach the controller knob to the parameter. So it was actually quite time consuming and a bit of a pain. And if you wanted to control a parameter that was beyond 128, you were just out of luck. So this is all changed in Live 8. I've loaded a new set in Live 8 with a blank MIDI track. And I focus on the track and double click on Massive in the browser, which loads the instrument. I'm going to move Massive up and out of the way a little bit here so we can see the device. And now if we unfold the device parameters. You'll see there are no parameters exposed by default. Simply click the configure button and now anything you click on on this interface will be mapped to the device. So one of the cool things about Massive is it has this macro control interface where it lays out eight knobs and if I click each knob in sequence you'll see that these just get added to the, to the device in Ableton Live and now I click the configure button and there they are, they're mapped. So you'll note the labels are just macro 1, macro 2, macro 3, macro 4. Those are the default labels in Massive. And I'm going to go ahead and load a different patch. That's the default patch called Slow Lurker. And I'll pull this up and out of the way again and you'll notice that the label that's on the parameter is now inherited by Live. So this gets even better when you use a controller like the APC40. And if I focus on the title bar of, of a device, that gives that device input focus. And now the device controls on the APC40 mirror what's going on in the software. So you can see that the LED rings reflect the device values. So if I change the value of a parameter, it changes it both in live and in the GUI. And if I change it in the GUI, it's reflected on the APC controller. Let me change patches. I'm just going to go up a patch. This is, and you'll see that the labels changed automatically because the VST allows for that, and the values in the halos change to match. So you're getting instant visual feedback from the APC40. So I'm going to go ahead and play a note so we can uh, hear what it sounds like as I change some of these parameters. So now you can see I've switched to my remote SL. I am using auto map 3 mode, but with the Novation I've actually got it set to be listening to Ableton Live. I haven't set it to listen to the VST and the advantage of doing it that way with this method is that it by giving input focus to the device, it automatically maps the parameters and their names into the remote SL as well. So just like on the APC40, if I turn a knob on the remote SL, it is affected in software as well. And one of the interesting things is that the APC40 and the remote SL interoperate. So if I turn a knob on this device, 
it actually brings the halo up on the APC-40 and and vice versa. So this is really great because now you can interact. You can use maybe your right hand on the remote SL and your left hand on the APC-40 and it really uh, opens up a lot of possibilities. Now let's take a look at the scenario where you want to add more than eight parameters to a device. I'm going to go ahead and switch patches here. Switch to something called butterfly stance and you'll see that of course the labels change just as before. And now I'm going to hit the configure button again and this time I'm going to add some more parameters. I'm going to click on release time for the envelope. I'll go ahead and map these EQ effects parameters knobs. Turn off configure and now these parameters are mapped. As you can see the APC-40 only has eight knobs so we have to use the shift functionality of the APC to get beyond that first set of eight parameters. So to do this you hold on your shift key and you can see there's a number two right next to this button. Now we're controlling parameters nine through sixteen. Let me hold down a key on my keyboard. So if I turn this knob it should change the release time. I'm going to press the key really quickly and let it go. Let's see if the sound continues to play. And it does. The release time has been extended. Change some of the EQ settings. If you wanted to go beyond 9 through 16, simply hold the shift key, press down 3 to get to the next set of parameters after that. Live 8 also lets you move parameters just hit the configure button and then drag and drop. Say I wanted FX mix to be assigned to the second knob. So there we go, now FX mix is listed second. Next I'm going to show you how to use racks to take this idea to the next level. So by right clicking on massive and selecting group that adds massive to a new instrument rack. And if I click this button you'll see it exposes the macro knobs. Now I'm going to use the file browser to add auto filter to this rack. So I'm going to select auto filter and drag it to this rack. Now I see both massive and auto filter in the rack. Now if I select map mode and select a parameter within massive I can assign FM delay to macro 1 and I'll slide over here and I will select this parameter and map it to knob number two. So if I pop massive back up and slide this, you'll see that it, the macro knob is now associated with this knob. Now let me hide the parameters in massive just to give us me a little more real estate. If I give input focus to the instrument rack, you'll see that the LED halos on the APC-40 now match the values in the software. They're completely off. And if I turn up this knob, you'll see that this turns up the parameter in the auto filter. And this one affects the parameter inside of Massive. So by using instrument racks, you can combine parameters from multiple devices into one device control group. So there you have it. Huge improvement over Live 7. Real game changer for me because I use a lot of VSTs with Ableton Live and a lot of them are really complicated and have a lot of parameters. So this has been a real lifesaver for me.